The 70 year fight by one East Tennessee family to honor a veteran of the forgotten war took a new disappointing turn. This was his plane that was shot down. A tattoo sleeve on the right arm of Terry Mumley sums up the short version of her grandfather's story of sacrifice. It's a very harrowing story. If you look up January 18, 1953, they were in the water for well over 24 hours. Already a decorated veteran in World War II, 32-year-old Lloyd Smith Jr. was a husband, father of two, and aircraft mechanic during the war in Korea when his plane was shot from the sky. And then the Coast Guard plane that went to rescue them got them all and then crashed in high seas trying to take off. Her grandfather was never seen again, and despite a formal death notice sent in 1955 to his widow, asking her to find solace, knowing her husband died serving his country courageously, the name Lloyd Smith Jr. was left off the modern-day Korean War veterans wall of remembrance in Washington, D.C. He's not honored. He's forgotten. I want my grandfather's name on the wall of remembrance for the Korean War. He, it's that simple. It's that simple. When we first spoke more than a year ago to Terry Mumley, an Army veteran herself, she had enlisted the help of fellow veterans, families of the fallen, and leaders in Congress to push the military to add the name of her grandfather to the new memorial wall honoring the missing and the dead during the war in Korea. If a person died in service to our country, they deserve to be there. That's my bottom line. But 16 months later, a new setback recently arrived in the mail. Letters from the Department of the Navy and Under Secretary of Defense say the death of Lloyd Smith Jr. and his crewmates aboard that plane did not meet the eligibility criteria for inclusion on the Korean War Veterans Memorial Wall of Remembrance. The government admits Lloyd Smith Jr. and his Navy crewmates were flying a military mission during the war in Korea but they took ground fire and crashed off the coast of China. And the latest letters from the Navy and the Department of Defense suggest the shootdown happened outside what they're calling the defined combat zone. There's another crash that was approximately 32 miles away, also in China, also a very similar aircraft and very similar mission, but it is considered they're killed in action in the Korean War due to hostile enemy fire. Hal Barker has devoted three decades to building a private database documenting veterans missing and killed in action through the nonprofit Korean War Project. Do you think the Korean War Memorial has so many mistakes that it needs to be torn down and rebuilt? I believe it's going to have to be rebuilt. Inspired by the military service of his own father, Barker cites hundreds of examples of mistakes on the current memorial wall. Dozens of names misspelled, names that shouldn't be on the wall but are, and names like Lloyd Smith Jr., he says, should be etched in stone but are missing. What in the world would be the government's motivation to not acknowledge the loss of these men? Uh, it's just bureaucracy. We have all these memorials in D.C., um, and if we're going to put one up, let's make it right. What was meant to be a national symbol in tribute to the fallen, now viewed by many as a national disgrace. And despite the most recent letters rejecting her plea, Terry Mumley refuses to give up the fight to honor her grandfather. Because they always hope you'll just go away and they won't hear from him anymore, and that's not going to happen. You can read both rejection letters in full from military leaders sent directly to Terry Mumley posted in the Service and Sacrifice section of WBIR.com.